Father, we thank you right now. We welcome you in this place. Take control. Have your way. Be exalted, Father, to the only place you deserve. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. Be lifted up, Father. May you be lifted up on our praises this morning. May you be lifted up in our worship this morning, Father. May it be all about you this morning, Jesus. May you be the center of it all this morning, O oh God. Center of it all. The center of our praise, the center of our focus, the center of our affection, Lord, the center of our love. Center of it all, Jesus, we give it to you now. Every crown we lay before you right now in the name of Jesus. Every achievement we give to you now, Father. We surrender it all to you. For you are worthy, Lord.
is open. table
still setting up this morning, um, I was lighting the candles. And we have these beautiful candles in gold bowls. And we haven't been lighting them for a while because the wax had gotten onto the wicks. And as you guys know with candles, when the wax gets onto the wick, it won't burn. So you can ask April and Marty. <laughs> I was there this morning with a spoon because I wanted to light these candles. And as I'm, as I'm there with this spoon, I'm pushing the wax aside and I'm trying to get this wood to stand up and we're there with the little gas light thing, <laughs> trying to light these things. And this is what the Lord said to me. The Lord said, so many people's flame has gone out because they've allowed the situation to get on top of it. The Lord is saying, today I am coming and I am removing the wax. I am removing the situation to reignite your flame again. I am pulling away the debris. I am pulling away. I am clearing a space. And as we're doing it, it's, I was busy burning around the wick because I knew if I can melt the wax, the wick will be able to stand up. And the Lord is saying, I am melting the wax. I'm melting the situation so that you can stand firm once more. You know, there's another candle that had a wasp in it. And for all you animal lovers, I am very sorry. I don't like wasps. So I'm there and I'm like, the fire will kill the wasp so it won't burn my children. And the Lord said to me in that, he's saying, you know what? The fire brings off the heat that attracts the insects and the bugs and the distractions. And the Lord said, I am going to ignite you so hot. Your flame is going to be so bright. The bugs are going to come. But as those bugs come, they will not be able to survive because your fire is too strong. So whatever you are facing, whatever you are going through, the Lord is removing so that you may shine brighter.
because you're going to do it it's because you've done it already hallelujah we don't have to wait for it we don't have to press in for it any longer you have already done it you have done it father 
That's why we sing a victory right now, Father. We declare your goodness. We declare your favor. Oh, we sing praises to the living God. Don't know how, but you did it. You are doing it right now. Moving mountains. Breaking strongholds in Jesus' name. Oh, you are doing it. You made a way where there seems to be no way. God of the impossible. God of the miracle. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. God of impossible. says no you say yes you say yes when the world says no you say yes when the world says no you say yes cause our God is got this. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, that you've got this. You've got this, Father. You've got the whole world in your hands. Every broken piece of it. Father, we thank you this morning that you've given us a victory. Victory belongs to Jesus, amen. Only to you. You will not share your glory, Father. And we thank you for that. That you are a jealous God. That you are a loving God. That you are a faithful God. That you are the God of the impossible, Father. Thank you for reminding us this morning that you still move. That you still move mountains, oh God. That you still heal. That you still mend the broken, Father. There is no one like our God. And that's why we love you, Father. There is none like you. There is none like you. There is none like you. Hallelujah.
Hallo, Liebe. Bin ich quasi zweite? Na? Oh, 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 me. <laughs> oh God, he's so faithful. Welcome, welcome back to a few familiar. Let me, let me not next to you. Oh God, he's faithful. God is faithful. Welcome back, guys. Those of you, you know who you are. Welcome back. Amen. Are you not excited about what God is doing? Father, we give you all the glory and all the honor this morning. For you deserve it. It is yours. And Father, this morning we come to you, Father, with humble hearts. With humble hearts, Father. And we say we lay it all down in you. We lay it all down afresh to you, Father. We don't want the glory for ourselves. We want the glory to go to our God, to our Father, to our King our friends for you move the mountains father you still call cause walls to fall down and i know this morning that strongholds were tumbling in the name of jesus as we worship and as we pray this morning strongholds were being broken down in the name of jesus there's power in worship there's power in praise father thank you for that weapon that you've given us father thank you father for the weapon of of worship the weapon of praise the weapon of declaration, the weapon in the name of Jesus, Father. That we are not without hope, Father. We are not without hope. We are rooted, Father, in your word. We are rooted, Father, in you. And thank you for that this morning. Thank you that you are restoring. Thank you that the seed will bear much fruit. In Jesus' name, we receive that. We prophesy that over the seed right now, Father. The seed will bear much fruit in Jesus' name for your kingdom's sake. We nourish that seed now in the name of Jesus. By the blood of the Lamb, we anoint it afresh, Father. May the seed bear much fruit in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. This morning I've got a, a word from the Lord. It, it should always be a word from the Lord, shouldn't it? <laughs> but this morning is in season. It's been confirmed by the mouth of two or three it was confirmed, and this morning we are excited to, to bring it and deliver it. You know, the Lord is amazing. Sometimes the Lord, and, and I've, I've learned this, don't press God into a box. Don't mold him into your system and into your structure. The word that I prepared for last week by the Holy Spirit was meant for last week, and those who were, who were here and those of you guys who watched the live stream will realize that word was not delivered yet. It's because God was still preparing the word. God was still refining the word he was still perfecting the word for its season and i love how that can happen sometimes there's a little bit of a delay and we sometimes see delay as a bad thing but sometimes god is protecting you through a delay hallelujah i'm speaking to somebody this morning sometimes there's a delay in your life and you don't realize the delay is there simply to protect you from where you need to be hallelujah and that's a word for somebody this morning don't despise the delay don't allow the delay to make you bitter. Then you will miss your moment. Allow the joy of the Lord to remain in your heart, remain your strength. Let the, let the, the delay refine you. Hallelujah. So when the time comes, the appointed time, when that time comes that you can come forth as gold. Hallelujah. That's what Job says. When he tests me, I will come forth as gold. Hallelujah. That's a word. Keep that in your heart. When he tests me, I will come forth as as gold now if you don't know that sometimes a delay is a test let me tell you when you want something you want something now the delay is not is not always a blessing let me tell you that but caleb clung to the promise of the lord hallelujah so let me share with you and, and i want to have a conversation with you and i pray that this word this morning will provoke you will challenge you and will bring you to a position of being more like christ more like jesus because that's what it was for me as i prepared this word under the holy spirit i realized hang on hang on there's some things that god is trying to speak to me about and the lord took me to revelation chapter 2 i shared this with some of our our friends here this morning already this week the lord took me to revelation 2 now for those of you guys who know revelation 2 it's not a, it's not a lecker word it's not a nice one 
And the word says this. So we can start from verse 3. To the angel of the church of Ephesus. So let's read the whole passage. These are the words to him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks amongst the seven lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people. That you have tested those who claim to be apostles and are not and found them false. You have persevered and endured hardships for my name's sake and not grown weary. It's, it's pretty good up until there, isn't it? That's a nice word up until that point, man. Yeah, I can take that. But then comes the crunch. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love that you had at first. You have lost your first love. I'm, I'm giving you a minute of silence to ponder about what I just said. You have lost your first love. The love that you had at first has grown cold. The passion that you had at first, you have lost it. You see, when you're passionate about Christ, when you are in love with Him as the first thing, there is nothing too difficult, there is nothing too much effort, there is not, there's nothing that can hinder you from His presence. Hallelujah. For in Him we live and move and have our being. In Him. Hallelujah. But when you, when you step a little bit away, when you start moving a little bit away, that flame, that little trickle of fire, is like a coal that is taken out of the flame and is put there on the bench on the side. You will all know, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to what will happen to that little coal. That coal will go out because it has left the fire. In him is our flame. In him is our being. In him is where our first love is nurtured and it grows there inside of him. So the word says to this church that you have left your first love. And I pondered with the Lord long and hard about, Father, what is that? Why have we lost our first love? What, what have we done, Father? Because surely we are still doing your work. Surely we are still, we're still having church. We're still having church is a, is a statement always for another day. <laughs> Let me not go there now. But we're still having church and we're still worshiping you. We're still praying. We're still doing these things. And it seemed as though all these rituals made as though we are still in love with God. But when you pulled back the layers of all the things that we've been doing, I realized we have strayed away from our first love. We have moved away from the very thing that we did not want to become. And the Lord reprimanded me and spoke to me and said, Nathaniel, get back to your first love. Thank you, Jesus. Get back to the place of purity where it's all about Jesus. Where nothing else matters. Where no other structure matters. But Jesus will be our only focus. Jesus will be our only desire. Nothing else. If he decides that in the morning that we are going to the beach by the Holy Spirit, then we go to the beach. If he says, by the Holy Spirit, don't sing a word this morning, wait on, on me, sit in my presence, then you do that. Don't allow the structure of church to limit what I am doing, said the Lord. Hallelujah. Sometimes we have church, we have orders, we have structures, and God is not in that. Hallelujah. And the Lord reprimanded Mr. Nathaniel, Get back to your first love. I'm speaking to myself first. And we did some investigation and praise God. Praise God for repentance. Do you know it's a good thing to repent? Do you know it's a good thing to be quick to repent? Do you know when you delay your repentance that you are simply delaying the promise of God over your life? But we repented. We said, Father, take us back to the place of our first love. Now you can turn with me to Daniel chapter 3. The title of this morning's message is Hearts on Fire. Hearts that still believe. Hashtag, I still believe. I still believe. In John chapter 2, 
you can read about how Jesus went into the temple court and you know the passage of how he made the whip. He saw what was going on in the temple. He saw what was going on in the house of God. and He, had to, he got quiet. <laughs> when Jesus gets quiet on you, you, you better be concerned. <laughs> so Jesus, as the word said, he got quiet and he knelt down or he bent down and he started making this whip. I marked it, he swept on. So V is this whip. And the word said the next minute he went into his father's house, into the temple court, and he started overthrowing the tables. He started smashing and beating and going like, going like a madman into his father's house and said, you have made my father's house a den of thieves. You have taken my father's house and removed the very essence of worship. Um, burn that in your heart. You have taken the very essence of worship from my father's house. Hallelujah. And when his disciples saw him, they were reminded of the word. Do you remember what it says in Psalms? That the zeal for your house consumes me. There was a fire inside of Jesus that burned so bright that it consumed the very ungodly things in the temple. I ask you this morning, how bright is your fire burning? How big is the flame? Daniel chapter 3. This is where our message comes from this morning. Say, I still believe. I still believe. Daniel 3 verse 1 says, King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold. There already it's interesting, you know, we just said at the beginning of this message that when you test me, I will come forth as gold. But this king made an image of gold. It tells us how high it was. In verse 2 it says, And then he sun summoned the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials to come to the dedication of the image that he had set up. I'm talking to you about true worship here. So all of the elect came to the image that the king had set up in verse 4. And then the herald loudly proclaimed, Nations and people of every language, this is what you are commanded to do. As soon as you hear the sound, Marty, don't get no so on your, on your uh, chauffeur. <laughs> As you, does it, does it, anyone else what the chauffeur be off plus? The sound of the worship. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship. The image of gold. My God. And the instruction went on and said, My, Whoever does not fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into a burning furnace. And you can imagine, you can think, why do they use a burning furnace? Because to throw a man into a fire is probably one of the worst deaths that you can imagine. It is brutal. It is painful. You you smell it. All your senses, all of your senses sense the pain. You will smell the burning of flesh. You will hear his voice. The very breath out of his lungs will scream for relief. And your eyes will perceive. I think there's something so ungodly about that when you see a man burning in a fire that was not meant for him. Hallelujah. Where was I? The fire into the burning furnace. Therefore, verse 7, Therefore, as soon as they heard the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, and all kinds of music, all the nations and peoples of every tongue fell down and worshipped the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. The very thing, I said this a few weeks ago, the very thing that we were called to do, the very thing that we as man and woman have been called to do, worship the King of Kings. I was not called to work. I wasn't called to, to look pretty. I wasn't called to sing nice songs. I wasn't called to play the guitar. I was called to worship Him. There is a difference. If I'm playing my guitar and, I, and you hear a false sound, please stop me. <laughs> Say, my brother, have a seat. Have a seat. But I pray that every time I pick my guitar up, that worship will flow through. There is a big difference. 
I am not here to stand, and I believe that you are not here to stand and sing pretty songs. We are here to worship the King of Kings. There must be a flame inside of you. There must be a fire inside of you when you stand in holy places and say, I am here to exalt the King. That's why sometimes I melt under the presence of the, of the, the weight of His presence because of the worship and the purity of flame that surrounds us when we sing to Him. We were called to do that. So this evil king says, the very thing that you were called to do, don't do that. I'm calling you here. I'm calling you this way. Here is the image of gold. If you don't bow before that image, if you don't bow, you will be put to death in the flame. You can go and read in Ezekiel 27, 28. Of how it speaks about the king of Tyre. And it's a, it's a picture of the enemy and the splendor, the glory, the golden image, the beauty of he who was. And how the enemy fell because of pride in his heart. And this image that he set up here before is like that image that we hear about there in Ezekiel 28. Bend and bow before this thing. Let's go on with the passage. At the time, some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. The very first commandment is you are not to have any other gods. You are meant to only worship the living God. So they said to the king, May the king live forever. Your majesty has issued a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, all kinds of music is not worship, hallelujah. They must fall down, and now you must worship the image of gold. That's what the king said. Whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into a blazing furnace. However, there are some Jews here that you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men were favored. Hallelujah. If you read Daniel 1, you read about the Daniel fast that we love so much. Daniel 2, we, we, we read about how Daniel interpreted the dream, but he went to these three men and said, pray with me, wait with me for the interpretation of the dream. These men were favored, and there was an assault on their character. There was an assault on their nature, on their character. You see, we as men and women of God need to defend one another's character. Otherwise, the enemy will come in like a flood and devour us. So the character is challenged here. They pay no attention to you, your majesty. They neither serve your gods nor worship the image that you have set up. Furious with rage, the king summoned the three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and these men were brought before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, my dear friends, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold that I set up? Now this morning I ask you, and I'm going to make a bold statement now. A bold statement. <laughs> when our president comes and says to us, you dare not worship. You dare not gather. You dare not go to the house of the Lord and worship. And we obey his command. Will me? I'm, 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 I know people are going to be offended by this, but I'm going to say it. If we obey what the enemy has set up for us, and we bow our knees and say, as you wish, Mr. President, I will not worship with my people. I will not go to the house of the Lord. I'll sit in the comfort of my own home, and I'll watch what I feel like. whether there's a live stream going on of my house or, or the people that I worship with, I'm going to watch what I feel like. I ask you, the, the, the story, the question that the king asked him, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve the gods that I worship? And I ask, I leave that question with you this morning. Do you bow to the image? Or do you say, I was called to worship? I was made to worship Him. 
we will go on in the story and you will see now what I'm saying to you. The king again comes to them and says, okay, fine, you didn't bow once. The first time you didn't bow. That was all right. But now I give you a second opportunity. When you hear the instruments and all kinds of music again, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image that I've made, then very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God? Say what God? My God. Hallelujah. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hands? Oh man, but here we see a holy fire rising up in these three men. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, and I thank you, Mr. President. We do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. I was not called to worship you. I was called to worship the living God. Hallelujah. Now, if we are thrown into the fire, then I'll say with me, our God is able. If we are thrown into the fire, then our God is able. If we are thrown into the fire, then we know that our God is able. Because I fear my God more than I fear you, Mr. President. You see, we bow too quickly. We lay down our crowns that God has given us as sons and daughters of the kingdom. And we say, you know what, I'm a bit afraid of that fire that they're talking about. You'll be imprisoned. You'll be thrown into the, the fiery furnace. These men said, my, my, Mr. King, you don't know my God. You don't know the fire that he has intended for me. I cannot bow to you. I would rather take the flame that you have. I would rather go into that furnace that you have made. But I will not defile the King of Kings. You see, church, we are coming into a time, whether you want to know it or not, whether I want to know it or not, that we will have to take a stand and say, I will not bow. If you think that time is far off and it's still coming far away, I have news for you, it's right here. It's at our doorstep. And I ask the question is, will you bow? Or will you be like these three men that said, my, my king... I cannot bow to you. For the word says, Nebuchadnezzar was furious with these three men. His countenance changed towards them. It reminds me of Pharaoh when Moses went to him and said, release my people. The word says that the Lord hardened his heart. You see, the minute, you need to see this and understand this, the minute those three men said, my king, Mr. President, I will not bow. Do you know what happened in the heavenly realm? God said, mobilize the troops. Get the angel armies ready. Tell them to start the fire. Tell them that the heavenly is about to burn with the zeal of the Lord. Because our God is an all-consuming fire. There was a fire starting to rage in the heavenlies. The minute they said, our God is able, I will not bow before you. God mobilized the troops and said, you get yourself ready. We've got a battle to go and fight on behalf of these three men. The word says that this king said, the countenance changed, and he said to him, you go and make that fire. It's burning now, but make it seven times hotter. Seven is the number of completion. Seven is the perfect number of God. Hallelujah. What the king didn't realize in this picture, he was saying to his men, go make that fire a representation of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You go and make it an image of what the living God will be. Because these three men are about to go into that flame. So these men were wearing their robes, their trousers, their turbans, their clothes were bound. And now... They were going to be thrown into the burning fires, fire. The, com the king's command was so urgent. The flames were so hot that it killed all the flesh. It killed all the flesh that threw these three men. The soldiers were eaten up and licked up by the flames. These three men, firmly tied, fell into 
the fire that was seven times harder than it should have been. And then, and then, when the king looked up into the flame, because I believe, I believe there was an inkling in his spirit, God is about to do something here. God is about to do something. The king leaped to his feet in amazement and asked the advisors, but weren't there, weren't there three? You see, when you make a stand for God, weren't there three men that were tied up and they were thrown into the flames? And they said, yes, it is, you are 100% right, Mr. President. There was only three of them. He says, but look, I see four men walking around in the fire. They are unbound. Praise God. They are set free. When they went into the flame, they were tied up. But when they went into the fire of God, praise God, they were set free in the flame. They are unbound and they are unharmed. And the fourth man looks like a son of the gods. Guys, our God is an all-consuming fire. Nothing else could have happened here than God meeting them in that fire. When you and me make a stand and say, Father, I'm coming back to my first love. I will not bow. I will not be shaken. I will not be moved. I will stand by what you have said to me. Every time you take that positioning, God says, mobilize. Surround them with flame. Surround them with protection. Allow them to be be protected under my fire. If you read Isaiah 43, it says, though you go through the fire, you will not be consumed because our God is an all-consuming fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want to turn your attention to John 14, verse 12 and 14. It's my, it's my, my dear wife, Eleanor. It's her favorite scripture. Hallelujah. Our God is, can you say with me, our God is an all-consuming fire. Our God is an all-consuming fire. Thank you, Father. So now, we know that these three men went into the flame, into the fire. They were not consumed. They were not, there wasn't even a smell of smoke on them. And I want to close my, close my message with this. I want to ask you the question is, do you still believe? Brown, do you still believe? Very truly, I tell you, and let me, let me say this about the scripture, all right? This scripture is not, not enjoyed by believers much. <laughs> we don't like the scripture. I'll tell you why now. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I've been doing. That's problem number one. And they will do even greater things than these. That is problem number two. Because I am, I am, I am going to the Father. The Word says, greater things you will do in my name. The things I have done and greater things, not because of who you are, not because of what you think you can do, but because I am going to, I'm going to the, I'm going to the fire. Greater things than I have done because I am going to the fire. The picture that we see in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego with Christ inside of the fire is the very thing that he's telling us here. If you can step into me, if you can just believe the scripture, if you can just believe what I said in my word, I will meet you in that flame. I will meet you in that fire. I will make the impossible possible for those of you who are willing to step into the flame. Hallelujah. But because of your lack of faith, you have stood outside of the flame and think, if I go in there, I'm dead. I'm dead meat. My flesh will burn. But if you can step into God, if you can step into where I am because I'm going to the Father, I am with the Father, greater things you will do because I intercede for you. I am standing with you. 
I am performing the miracle on behalf of you. You are nothing but the vessel. Hallelujah. You are nothing but my instrument of choice. But I am in the fire. You need to come to the place of fire to move in the impossible things. And I will do whatever you ask, verse 13, in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And then you may ask anything of me in my name, and I will give it to you. I will do it for you. Miracles happen. Throne room and atmosphere of miracles. Miracles happen when we move in the fire. When we choose as a people to say every word that you have spoken... You see, because I'll tell you what happens with the scripture here, the John 14, 12, is written, I'm guilty of it myself. You must put the scripture in context. Don't, don't take the word on its, on its thing. Remember, you must put the scripture in context. Well, we can't do what Jesus did. We try and calculate, analyze, work it out. In the meantime, the answer to the very thing that he's saying is that you will do that simply because I'm with my Father. Hallelujah. I'm in the fire. I say, I choose to believe this morning. I cannot speak for you. And this is my closing. I believe. Can I call my MPI track here, Abraham? Can you just assist me with you? I don't even want to help you, but I'll Thank you, Abraham. Thank you, Abraham. Put my hand up first. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for my demonstration, bro. These words on my chest says, I still believe. There is a people in these end times. Brown, come stand here with me. Take off your shirt there. There is a people. Marty, come stand with us, believe. Can you come and stand with us, Marty? There is a people in these last days that will say, I choose to step into the fire. I choose to still believe. Every word that comes from your mouth, Father. There was three in the fire. In the three. <laughs> <laughs> there was three in the fire, and when the three decided they're stepping in, we step into the flame, Father God. Holy Spirit, we pray right now that there will be a people, that there will be a nation, that your sons and daughters, Father, will be bold enough to step back into the flame. Father, for we were born in the fire. And we choose right now to step right back into that place. The place of worship. The place of the throne room. The place where our Father dwells. We pray right now, prayer of repentance, Father, if we have stepped out of line. If we have lost our way somewhere. But this morning we say as your people, we choose to believe. We choose to believe. We choose to believe. Every word that you have said, Jesus, we choose to believe. Thank you, Lord. We seal this word. We bless your people. We plead the blood of the Lamb over them right now, Father. May the fire of God consume them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hello. Yeah. One, one. Okay. I uh, just wanted to be obedient. Um, I picked up a few things uh, in worship and when Al was speaking and prophesying. Um, I'm going to start with this. Paul says that we know the mysteries of God. Why? Because of who is in us. And if we believe, still believe, that Jesus died for us, we will believe what Wilmy sang, the veil was torn. The veil was torn. We can come step Amen. In, Amen. into the Father. Mm. If we believe that we can come step into the Father, we will believe what Jesus said. Mm. Uh, mountain, be gone. Mm. And it will be gone. Praise God. And mm. if we still believe that what Jesus says can be done, then our faith will manifest that. Amen. Just like when the walls of Jericho fell down. Mm. They had the faith. They still believe. Amen. Amen. But in the same sense, Revelation 2, don't forget your first love. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the God. next battle they lost. Why? Because one person forgot their first love. Mm. He went over looking for the gold. 
But uh, with the love of the Father, we repent. Amen. And they went back and they won that battle. Because God is a all consuming. All consuming. Oh, praise God. Amen. Thank you, bro. Amen. Can we stand together for one last time? Thank you, bro. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you that you alone are God, that there is none beside you, that you are holy and that you are all-seeing and all-consuming. And this morning you come and you say to us as your sons and daughters, step into the flame with me. Step into the fire with me. Come back to your first love. Father, I pray, Father, over your people, a nation that will worship you in and out of season, not just when they feel like it, Father, but a people that will be birthed and a people that will stay in the flame. Where you dwell, Father, is where we want to be. So take us deeper. May we become living flames for you, O God. Consume us, O oh Father. Consume us, God. May our hearts beat like yours beats. May our thoughts be your thoughts, O oh God. For you are worthy. We speak death to our flesh now. And we say yes to the Spirit. Spirit, lead this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody.